Hey, what's going on guys? Today, I wanna to talk about a problem that I've experienced myself and that I, I was able to solve, but it's really difficult to understand what is going on and why it's happening. And essentially what the problem is, is traditional estimating methods are gonna predict how long a job is gonna take. And sometimes can be very, very accurate, where other times it's really inaccurate, but what's confusing and hard to understand is you're bidding it the same way every time and it's literally almost the same job, but for some reason, the time is off. So to help paint this picture and make it easier to understand, just imagine that there's an apartment complex and it has a bunch of units, but every single unit is the exact same, meaning it's the same floor plan, same amount of bedroom, square foot, that sort of thing. And every time they need painting, you go and paint it, and they only paint three things. They paint walls, ceilings, and baseboards. But sometimes they do it in different combinations, like maybe they'll do just walls and baseboards but no ceiling. Sometimes they'll do all three, sometimes they'll just do one, yada yada. All right, now traditional estimating methods, they're gonna figure out how much time it's gonna take to paint each one of those three things, the walls, the baseboards, and the ceilings. And just to make this simple, let's just say it takes one unit of time, so it could be an hour, it could be a day, um, to paint each one of those things. So if you think about it, if you're painting all three, well that would be three, days or hours, whatever the unit of time is. If you paint two, it'd be two, and if you paint one, it'd be one. And that's how a lot of traditional estimating works, but unfortunately, in the real world, when you go to paint those things, the amount of time it takes isn't linear like that. It changes a lot, so to really help understand how it changes and what it looks like, let's go ahead and jump into my estimating system. All right, let's look at just baseboards, and you'll see right here, it's predicting about five hours to paint the baseboards, and it's gonna break it down into three steps. Create the line at the top of the baseboard, which would be the wall. Create the line at the bottom of the baseboard, so you gotta tape off the floors. And then, obviously, you have to paint in the middle, you have to paint the baseboard. It's very similar with painting just walls, right? There's the top of the wall, which is this time right here where you're making a line between the wall and the ceiling. And then there's the bottom of the wall where you're making a line between the wall and usually the baseboard. There's a lot of cases though where it's, it's not a baseboard. It's the top of a door frame. It's the top of some cabinets in the kitchen. So really, this is just the best description that I thought I could put, but instead of baseboards, you could just say tape off the top, tape off the bottom, or create a line from the top to the bottom and paint in the middle. So you can see there's three steps with the walls. There's three steps with the baseboards, top, bottom, middle. But what happens when we combine both the walls and the baseboards? Well, three plus three is six, but now it's only showing five steps. And that line that you're gonna create between the baseboard and the wall, well, that only has to be taped off or cut by hand once. Because think about it, if we're painting the baseboards first in this scenario, we just have to tape off the floor and then we can paint the baseboard and it's okay to get some paint on the wall because when we do the walls, we're gonna fix that. And that's why a lot of times you'll see, hey, I do great when I'm doing the walls and the baseboards together, but with traditional estimating methods, sometimes you'll wonder like, why am I not doing as good when I do just walls or just baseboards? And it's because when you estimate for both, there's five steps, but when you estimate for them individually and do them separate, there's actually six steps if you were to do them separately. And you can see with the baseboards, it, it's actually a pretty uh, time-consuming step when you actually measure it and track how much time it takes to do this stuff, which I have done. So you can see for the baseboards, we got about five hours. For the walls, we got about 6.8. But when we do them together, you can see the walls is actually like 6.3 instead of 6.8, and the baseboards are about three. So there's a lot of time saved when you do them together. And it may not seem like a big deal, you're basically getting 10 hours when you do them both and 12 when you do them separate, but two out of 10, that, that's 20%. If you do a $50,000 commercial job and you're off by 20%, then that's gonna make a really big deal. But then again, whether you're doing it yourself or using subs, it's just such a wide inconsistency. So let's see what happens when we add the ceilings. You can see essentially it's really just painting the ceilings, that's the only extra step. Because if you're doing all three, if you paint the ceilings first, you don't actually have to create that line between the wall and the ceiling, that's included in the wall steps, where you're cutting a line from the wall to the ceiling. And obviously if you're doing the baseboards or the walls, when you tape off the floor from the baseboards, that's gonna mask enough of the floor. But when you do the ceilings, you have a lot more floor that you're gonna need to mask. So we're getting about two and a half hours. But what happens if we just paint the ceilings? Well, you can see down here, there's no time right here. And when we add in the ceilings, it's just adding in these two right here. But when we actually paint the ceilings by themselves, it takes more time 
because if you've ever painted the ceiling, you'll know it's a lot harder to create that line from the wall to the ceiling when you're only painting the ceiling because you're working against gravity and because of the angles. When people actually look at the line, it doesn't look as straight as if you're creating the line on the wall. So it adds in more time for that. So you can see just the ceilings alone is actually four and a half hours. You can see how these prices will change. You know, if I turn off the walls, baseboards goes up and ceiling goes up. Because if you don't paint the walls and you just paint the ceiling and the baseboards, it's going to take more time to just paint those by themselves than if you are going to paint the walls. And you can see the wall stays the same even if you're not painting the baseboards and the ceiling. Adding those on isn't too bad, but the instant you don't paint them, well then that gets more expensive. And I'm only scratching the surface on how much nuance and intricacies there are when it comes to estimating painting. I mean, you can see this says 1.7 now, but it'll jump up to 1.8 here. And that's essentially because in this room, there's 51 foot of baseboards, but 54 foot of wall length. So that would be something like a door frame, where if you're just painting the baseboards, that line has to be created, but the instant that you add on the walls, there's a little bit more of a line to be created. You can see on my inputs, you know, there's not just one kind of window, there's not just one kind of door. There's a difference in the amount of time it takes off to mask just a vinyl window that has no painting versus painting a wood window where there's a ton of trim. But it's set up nice and easy, you know, if there are windows, you just pick what kind of window it is and then you put in the amount of windows. And the sheet will do the rest of it for you and you can see it's really easy to just play with things by turning them off and on to see how much it costs. Let's take a look at what a difference it would make if we were to use the same paint on the walls and ceilings versus using two different colors. So with my estimating sheet, you can see it's bidding for about 12 and a half hours if you were to paint all three a different color, walls, ceilings, baseboards. But if we were to tell the sheet that they're gonna be all the same color, same sheen, same paint, well now you can see it's saying it's only gonna take about seven and a half hours. So that's a drastic difference in time. And if you were to have actually gotten this job, it was all one color, and the first time you paint it, everything goes well, you think it's great, and then the next time you come back and they do want them to be separate colors and you don't actually charge more, well, you're going to be in a world of hurt because it's going to take almost twice as long to do it. And you can see when we were to click these on, basically, hey, this is saying walls, ceiling, same color. You can see it removes steps. So one of the step is, you know, we don't have to create that line from the wall to the ceiling anymore. It's the same color, same sheen. It's just not a step that's necessary. So that's going to save us some time. And then if we were to make the baseboards the same color, well now you can see we're saving more steps. You know, we don't have to tape off the walls from the baseboards anymore. And we also, if you think about it, the baseboards become a part of the wall since it's all the same color. So it, it literally just removes that entire step. All right, again, we were looking at just one room. And I know it doesn't seem like a lot when you're looking at one room, but in terms of percentages, like I mentioned before, you know, a 15 to 20% difference can be enormous on a big, you know, 10, 20, $100,000 job. And I'm just scratching the surface of all these little nuances that happen when it comes to estimating and actually doing the project. If you want to know more about my estimating sheets, you can check them out. There's just so many little things that come into play when it comes to estimating. And I figured this out just by estimating and then literally watching painters paint and timing how long things take. And over the last decade, I've learned how different nuances and intricacies of different jobs affect how long it's gonna take. And I just made a list of all the problems why we're not producing on budget and tried to make a solution for those with my estimating. And it's been a long process, but I feel like I've really done my best and I'm sure I'm biased here, but I really do think the way that my estimate sheets are estimating is the most accurate way that you can estimate. Now the only issue with that is, is if you're taking everything into account, it takes a long time to estimate because you really have to like think about every little thing and put it together. And that's why I put it in a simplified spreadsheet to where you're just entering the measurements and it does all the other work for you. And then it's literally like just clicking things on and off or changing things from one thing to the other. And it'll spit out a price and I take into account all those little intricacies and details that do make a big difference. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Really appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.